All right, third graders, we're going to continue on with Magic Treehouse number 21, Civil War on Sunday. And we'll be reading the last two chapters, starting with chapter 9, Don't Give Up. Annie, said Jack. Over here, she called. Jack saw two figures standing in the twilight. He walked over to Annie and Clara. They all stared in the direction of the distant battlefield. Bright lights flashed against the dark blue horizon, cannon shells exploding. Every time you see a flash, you know a shell may have taken a life or many lives, said Clara. That's awful, said Annie. Yes, it is, said Clara. A whole world can vanish in that flash. All a young man's joys and sorrows, all his memories. This is a cruel war, said Annie. All wars are cruel, said Clara Barton. People feel they must fight for causes they believe in, but they soon discover that war is not about glory and fame. It's about misery and terrible pain and sadness. It makes me miss my mom and dad, said Annie. It makes me really miss them. Annie sounded tired and homesick. Finally, she had lost her cheerfulness. I think it's time for you two to go home, said Clara. Jack thought of all the wounded men who needed food and water and kindness and comfort. No, said Jack. We have to stay. We can't give up. That's on the list. Don't give up. Jack pulled out their list to show Clara Barton. Oh, yes, she said, nodding. I see one of my nurses has written down the things I often say. Let me add one more thing. Do not forget the ones who love you. Jack heaved a big sigh. He was homesick. Can we keep the list? he asked. Of course, said Clara. You don't have to work in a hospital to follow my words. They work in all of life, no matter where you go. Thanks, said Jack. Many thanks to both of you, said Clara. You both were great helpers. You were a great teacher, said Annie. Goodbye, said Clara. Be very careful going home. We will, said Jack and Annie. Bye! The sun was setting as they walked out of the camp. The boom of cannons sounded in the distance. Soldiers were singing a song around a campfire. We're tenting tonight on the old camp ground. Give us a song to cheer. Our weary hearts, a song of home and friends we love so dear. Jack and Annie walked through the darkening field. By the time they reached the woods, the stars were out. They climbed up the rope ladder to the treehouse. Annie grabbed the Pennsylvania book. Wait, said Jack. He looked out the window. He couldn't see anything below, but the soldier's song still carried through the warm, starry night. Many of the hearts that are weary tonight, wishing for the war to cease. As Jack listened, he thought of Clara Barton, the elderly slave, the young Confederate soldier, and John, the drummer boy. War is not a game, Jack said softly. It is definitely not a game. Many are the hearts looking for the right to see the dawn of peace. The song ended. The cannon fire stopped. The night was quiet except for the croaking of frogs. Ready, Annie whispered. Ready, said Jack. And Annie, pointing at the picture of the Frog Creek Woods, said, I really wish we could go home. The wind started to blow, and the trio started to spin, and it spun faster and faster and faster. Then everything was still absolutely still. Chapter 10. Home, Sweet Home. 
There was a booming in the distance. Jack opened his eyes and caught his breath. <gasps> Is that cannon fire, he wondered. Are we still back in the Civil War? We're home, said Annie. Home, sweet home. Oh, man, Jack whispered. They were home. They were back in the Frog Creek woods. They were wearing their own comfortable clothes again. The cannon fire was really only thunder, and at that moment Jack loved the thunder. Rain drops tapped against the treehouse. We better hurry, said Jack. Wait, leave the list in the treehouse, said Annie. It's the first special writing from Morgan's library. Something to follow. Jack took the list of Claire Barton's rules out of his backpack. He put it on the floor next to Morgan's letter. I wonder how that list will help save Camelot, he said. I don't know, said Annie. But you know what's weird about getting that list? I think we couldn't have just taken it home when we first got it. I think, I think we had to live it first. Jack nodded. Annie was completely right. He picked up his backpack. Wait, I see another note, said Annie. She picked up a piece of paper off the treehouse floor. On it was written, come back on Wednesday. Well, I guess that's when Morgan wants us to look for the next special writing, said Annie. Well, that's in three days, said Jack. Let's go home and get some rest. He started down the rope ladder, and Annie followed. When they stepped onto the ground, the rain began to pour down. Run, said Jack. They ran through the Frog Creek woods. They ran down their street. They ran to their porch and dashed into their dry, cozy home. They found their parents reading in the living room. Dad! Mom! Annie cried. We're so glad to see you! Well, we're, we're glad to see you too, their dad said, sounding a little puzzled. Now go and put some dry clothes on, said their mom. Jack and Annie started up to their rooms. Halfway up the stairs, Jack stopped. Oh, I have a question, he called out to his parents. Did anyone in our family fight in the Civil War? Their dad looked a little surprised. Yeah, he said. One of your great-great-great-grandfathers was a drummer boy. Oh, oh man, whispered Jack. What was his name, Dad? asked Danny. Uh, John, their dad said. Oh, Annie and Jack gasped. And, 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 and what happened to John? Jack asked. Was he hurt in the war? No, he grew up to be a, um, a school teacher, their mom said. He had five children. Jack and Annie whooped with joy. That's great news, said Annie. Really great news, said Jack. Thanks for telling us. Sure, their dad smiled, though he was a little puzzled still. As Jack hurried up to his room, some of the words from the Civil War song ran through his head again. Give us a song to cheer our weary hearts, a song of home. And that is Civil War on Sunday.